Hello and welcome to NYSI's Science Learning Series. My name is Grace. And my name is Sophie. Grace and I work at the New York Hall of Science. Today we are going to be messy matter scientists. Oh no, I don't want to get messy. Don't worry, just use an apron or an old t-shirt that you don't mind getting dirty. Science can be a little messy, but it's always fun. Scientists use their senses to make observations, all except for one. Can you guess which one? Hmm, it's a taste, unless you're making ice cream. You're right. We use our eyes to see, our nose to smell, our ears to listen, and our hands to touch, and only taste if we're doing kitchen chemistry with an adult. Let's see how many senses we can use today. To do this activity along with us, you will need the following supplies. Paper, coloring supplies such as crayons or markers, a small bowl of Cheerios, or other objects that are similar in size and shape. Using your coloring supplies, draw three large cups on your paper. Make sure that all your cups are the same shape and size. Next, let's label each cup. Solid, liquid, and gas. These are the three states of matter. Molecules make up matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. The chair you're sitting on is a solid. The water you drink is a liquid and the air you breathe is a gas. Do you think molecules look different in each phase of matter? Make a hypothesis. For your hypothesis, I want you to pretend your Cheerios are molecules and put them in the cups that you drew. How do you think they are arranged? Are they close together or are they far apart? Molecules don't change, but the way they move does. Matter changes state when more energy gets added to it. Energy is often added in the form of heat or pressure. The molecules in a solid are held tightly together and don't move easily. The molecules in a liquid are looser and can move about easily. The molecules in a gas are more spread and move faster than the liquid molecules. To do this activity along with us, you will need the following. Water, different shaped containers, wooden blocks, plastic bricks, or items that are of similar size and shape. Optional blue food coloring. These are the containers that I have. The containers you have at home might look different. What do you think will happen if I pour this cup of water into one container compared to another container? Make a hypothesis. Try it into another container. What do you notice is happening? That's right, liquid takes on whatever shape the container is. Liquids flow and take the shape of their container because their particles can move around each other. What do you think would happen if we put these plastic bricks in the same containers? Solids have a definite shape and don't take the shape of their container. When I say gas, what does that make you think of? If that question made you giggle a little, it's okay, you're not alone. A gas is just a type of matter where the molecules are very spread out. Gas molecules like to take up all the space of whatever container it's in. The air we breathe is a gas, and so are the molecules that you see at the top of a boiling pot of water. Gas can be tricky for people to perceive, as it's often colorless and odorless. And because we're surrounded by it all of our lives, it's hard to register feeling it as we do a solid or a liquid. So how do we know it actually exists? Today, we are going to do an experiment where we can actually see a gas. To do this gassy balloon activity with us, you will need the following supplies. A soda bottle or other similar container with a small opening, baking soda, vinegar, a balloon, a spoon, and a funnel. 
Start by adding some vinegar to your bottle using a funnel if need be. You may need an adult's help with this part. Vinegar is an acid. The more vinegar you add, the bigger the reaction will be. If you are doing this experiment in a place where mess would not be welcome, consider adding just a little at first. If the result isn't as exciting as you hoped, you can always redo the experiment and use more vinegar. Next, use the spoon or paper funnel to add some baking soda to the balloon. Baking soda is a base. Acids and bases are opposites of each other. And when they meet, there's always some kind of exciting chemical reaction. Next, carefully attach the balloon to the lip of the bottle without spilling the baking soda into the bottle just yet. The way I make this work is by twisting the neck of the balloon a few times to create a barrier. Then I stretch the mouth of the balloon over the mouth of the bottle. Once the balloon is attached to the bottle, I adjust the balloon down to ensure the balloon is securely attached. Sometimes you need a second pair of hands for this. Hypothesis time. What do you think will happen when the basic baking soda in the balloon meets the acidic vinegar in the bottle? Why do you think that? Okay, time to make a reaction. Tip the balloon upright so all the baking soda slides into the bottle and then set the balloon back down and watch. What's happening? You can see my balloon is rapidly expanding and when I squeeze it, I feel resistance. Obviously, there is now something inside that balloon when it was just empty moments ago. What is filling that balloon and where is it coming from? Well, like I said before, when an acid and a base meet, there is always a reaction. In this case, they start to make carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide is a gas that we actually make in our own bodies. It's present in every breath we exhale. It is odorless, colorless, and hard to sense without additional help. But it does take up physical space, as we can clearly see and feel. The carbon dioxide gas molecules are spreading out as far as the balloon allows, trying to fill the whole space of the container. If I were to remove the balloon, the molecules will begin to spread out in this room until they are fully mixed in with the air in this room. We did some cool experiments with liquids and gases. Next up is making messy matter. We'll be using a recipe that's found in both the teacher and student guide. Time to get messy. Make sure you line the table with either newspaper or a plastic tablecloth for easy cleanup. To do this activity along with us, you will need the following supplies. Cornstarch, a container or bowl, a spoon, water, measuring cups, one cup and a half cup. Food coloring is optional, as well as a plastic baggie. First, add one and a half cups of cornstarch in a bowl. Measure one cup of water in a separate container. You can add food coloring to the water if you have some. Then slowly add the water to the cornstarch and mix with a spoon. If the mixture is too runny, add a teaspoon of cornstarch. If the mixture is too cakey, add a teaspoon of water. Hypothesis time. Based on what you learned in the other activities, what phase of matter do you think Ublek is? How do you know? Now that we have our mystery matter, let's use our senses to identify what phase of matter it is. Push test. Take your finger and poke the oobleck quickly like this. What happens? Try poking the oobleck slowly. Wow, that was weird. When I put a lot of pressure and poked the oobleck quickly, it acted like a solid. But when I poked the oobleck slowly, it acted like a liquid. Pickup test. Let's try another experiment. Can you pick up the oobleck with your hands? Pick up the oobleck and place it on your hands. How does it feel? Does it feel different when you squish it versus when it just lays flat on your palm? Pour test. Try pouring the oobleck from one container to another or your hands back into the container. Once you finish the experiment, you can put away your messy matter in a resealable container or a plastic baggie. If you don't want to keep your oobleck, I would wait until it dries a bit and throw the dried cornstarch out in the garbage instead of down the sink. What is this messy matter? It's oobleck. Oobleck is a non-Newtonian fluid. A non-Newtonian fluid 
acts like a liquid or solid depending on force. If you notice, when you push down on it, it acts more like a solid. But when you just let it rest on your hands, it runs like a liquid. What are some other examples of this? The food industry deals with many other non-Newtonian fluids, such as ketchup, mayo, jelly, and cranberry sauce. Understanding how these materials behave help food scientists create more tasty food products. Biologists studying cells are also interested in non-Newtonian fluids because the cytoplasm inside cells show non-Newtonian behavior, and that influences many other cellular processes. Engineers are even finding ways of using non-Newtonian fluids in our everyday lives by filling potholes. That was fun, and it wasn't so messy after all. We also learned about the three phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Science is super fun, especially when you get your hands on and use your senses. Thanks for watching and getting messy with us. See you next time.